Calaroga Shark Media. From the Republican National Convention where Joe Biden has COVID isn't even the top story, this is Ballot. That's right. Wednesday belonged to J.D. Vance, but the sharks are circling around Grandpa Joe. Let's hit this. The night was all about J.D. Vance. Well, unless you're Matt Gates. Look, you either got that last joke or you didn't. And if you did, that's a solid one. Let's start with the man of the hour, J.D. Vance. Remember when he was just a best-selling author telling us about his hillbilly roots? Well, now he's Trump's mini-me, spouting populist rhetoric faster than you can say, I've completely changed my political views for convenience. Vance went from criticizing Trump to praising him with such enthusiasm, you'd think Trump had personally plucked him out of Appalachia and bestowed upon him the gift of political relevance. Vance's speech was a masterclass in cognitive dissonance. Here's a former venture capitalist railing against Wall Street and multinational corporations. It's like watching a fox criticize Henhouse security while wearing a chicken costume. He talked about raising wages and battling China as if he hadn't been part of the very system he's now decrying. But hey, in politics, yesterday's beliefs are about as relevant as last year's iPhone model, right? It looks like Vance has decided to play the I'm not a politician card at the Republican National Convention. Because nothing says I'm not a politician, like accepting a vice presidential nomination at a major political party's convention, right? Vance, the man who went from hillbilly elegy to Trump's BFF faster than you can say political opportunism, gave us a real rags to riches story. He's like a walking, talking Horatio Alger novel, but with more MAGA hats. He's so proud of being a good husband and father, you'd think he was running for dad in chief instead of vice president. I guess in the GOP, family values are the new political currency. And let's not forget his appeal to the Rust Belt. He mentioned Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania more times than Trump mentions himself in a day. It's like he's trying to win a game of electoral bingo. Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. Hey, aren't those all swing states? That's weird. I guess if you're in California, you can go hose yourself off. And let's not forget the rest of the star-studded lineup of speakers. We had Peter Navarro, fresh out of prison and ready to party. Nothing says law and order. Quite like cheering for a guy who just did time for contempt of Congress. It's like the GOP is playing a game of how many ex-cons can we fit on one stage. I'm half expecting Bernie Madoff to make a surprise appearance via Ouija board. Meanwhile, Trump's trying to soften his image by having women speak for him. It's like he's playing political ventriloquism. See, I don't say mean things about women. I just get other women to say nice things about me. Laura Trump, Kellyanne Conway, and even his granddaughter were trotted out to paint a picture of Trump as a loving family man. It's like watching a nature documentary where they try to convince you that grizzly bears are just big, cuddly teddy bears. And don't even get me started on the culture war rhetoric. It was flying around that convention hall faster than a Fox News ticker. We had Callista Gingrich essentially accusing Biden, a devout Catholic, of leading an anti-faith crusade. It's like accusing the Pope of being secretly Protestant. Then there was Tom Homan, practically frothing at the mouth as he told immigrants to start packing. I haven't seen that much misplaced aggression since my cat tried to fight its own reflection. The whole convention is a testament to how much Trump has reshaped the Republican Party. It's not your grandfather's GOP anymore. Unless your grandfather was really into populist rhetoric, questionable trade policies, a dash of xenophobia, and some really crisp-looking uniforms. And let's not forget the elephant in the room. Or should I say, the elephant not in the room, abortion. The GOP tiptoed around that topic like it was a sleeping bear. I guess they finally realized that taking away people's rights isn't as popular as they thought. Who knew? Finally, we have Ronnie Jackson, Trump's former doctor, talking about Biden's health while conveniently forgetting that Trump is just a few Big Macs away from the same age bracket. It's like watching a kettle call the pot old and decrepit. All of a sudden, Trump has a granddaughter, which makes sense since Trump is Joe Biden's age. And I have to credit the Trumps for keeping the children out of all the politics. Until now, anyway. I'm not here to make fun of children. And I won't. But I also realize who is Kai Trump is going to be good for SEO. Last night, Kai Madison Trump, all of 17 years old, took the stage at the RNC to give us all a glimpse of the normal grandpa side of Donald Trump. Because nothing says normal like having your teenage granddaughter speak at a national political convention, right? Kai, bless her heart, 
tried to paint a picture of Trump as your average run-of-the-mill grandpa. You know, the kind who gives you candy when your parents aren't looking and checks notes. Prints out your honor roll achievements to show his friends. I'm sure all the other grandpas out there are nodding along thinking, yep, that's exactly what I do when I'm not running for president or dealing with multiple felony charges. And let's not forget the golf. Apparently, Trump calls her in the middle of the school day to chat about their golf games. Because who needs math when you can work on your swing? Am I right? It's heartwarming to know that even when he's going through all these court cases, he still finds time to encourage Kai to be successful. Talk about multitasking. Now you're probably wondering, what's Joe Biden been up to? Oh, he has COVID. Normally that would be a big story and not the story I goof on over the silly upbeat music bed in the second half. Just hours after news broke, that Joe himself said if a doctor told him not to run, then he wouldn't run. All of a sudden he has COVID. It's like when you saw Kevin Bacon in Beverly Hills Cop 4 and you knew he was going to be the bad guy. Oh, did I just spoil Beverly Hills Cop 4 for you? You had two weeks. Don't act like you were planning on watching Beverly Hills Cop 4 tonight. Anyway, when you do watch it, it's super obvious. Like Biden saying if a doctor gave him an out, he would take it. Biden's doctor says he's got mild symptoms, which in political speak probably means he's feeling about as chipper as a wet cat. But don't worry, he gave us a thumbs up before jetting off to Delaware. Because nothing says I'm fine like fleeing to your home state, right? Do they not have doctors at the White House? He has to work from his Delaware beach house? That's the excuse I'm going to give the bosses at Calaroga Shark Media next weekend when they ask me to work a fourth weekend in a row. Hey, I'd love to make fun of Trump and stuff, but I have COVID. I can't possibly record something using a USB mic and a laptop. The timing of Biden's diagnosis is about as perfect as a root canal during a job interview. Democratic lawmakers have been begging to see Biden out front, and now he's going to be behind closed doors. It's like telling a hungry dog to sit and stay while you eat a steak dinner. Meanwhile, the Democratic Party is in such a tizzy. They're starting to sound like a group of squirrels who've had too much coffee. Adam Schiff, bless his heart, chose this moment to publicly call for Biden to drop out. Talk about kicking a man when he's down and contagious. And let's not forget about Kamala Harris, who's keeping her campaign schedule like it's business as usual. I guess in the Biden administration, the show must go on even if the star has to watch from his living room overlooking the ocean. Must be rough. Nancy Pelosi, the queen of power suits and perfectly timed clapbacks, apparently decided to give old Joe Biden a ring. And let me tell you, this wasn't your average how's the weather in DC kind of call. Oh no, this was more like a Houston, we have a problem conversation. According to our sources, who are probably hiding in the White House closets as we speak, Pelosi basically told Biden, Listen, Joe, the polls are about as good for you as a chocolate teapot. She's worried that if Biden keeps running, the Democrats' chances of winning the House will vanish faster than ice cream at a summer picnic. Even that guy Brute was like et tu Nancy? But Biden, bless his heart, wasn't having it. He pulled out his own set of polls faster than you can say malarkey. When asked for comment, the White House spokesperson basically said, la la la, I can't hear you. It's the political equivalent of sticking your fingers in your ears and humming loudly. And Pelosi's team? They're playing the, she's been in California. She hasn't talked to Biden card. Because apparently phones don't work across state lines anymore. It's like when my sister doesn't text me back for four days. Well, I guess she didn't want my extra Kenny Chesney ticket. Her loss. My sister, not Nancy Pelosi. Although if Nancy Pelosi wants to come see Kenny Chesney, have her text me. Speaking of Nancy Pelosi, before I go, can I talk about the worst part of the day? Even worse than me blowing the edit at the end of yesterday's show? If you had CNN on around 7, you saw Nancy Pace get up there. She introduced herself as Nancy Don't Call Me Pelosi Pace. It was perhaps the lamest attempt at a joke in the history of mankind. And I say that as someone who has made 50 lame jokes in today's episode. At least I had the help of AI in making today's show. Nancy, maybe pay the $20 for chat 4.0. I'll probably be back later today as I'm sure something will happen. By the way, never grab dinner with Anderson. He takes forever to eat.